Just like the ice melts in your cup on a hot summer day, so do the glaciers in the Arctic. Hi, welcome to the Arctic 101 series. My name is Dane Ramesh, and I'm the North American Fellow for the Arctic Climate Change Emerging Leaders Program. This is the first of many videos that will explain to you the most critical Arctic issues. You know, you may have been hearing a lot about the Arctic in the news. The United States Coast Guard has announced its plans for Arctic Shield 2014, a mission to increase its presence in the Arctic and gain knowledge of an area that has historically always been covered by ice. You may well wonder why the Royal Marines are here training in the snow. After all, the Cold War is long over, and most of their recent fighting has been done in the heat and dust of Afghanistan. Well, one reason is that this region, the High North, contains 25% of the world's oil and gas supplies. This is as much about ensuring energy security. The rowers collected data for Canadian scientists. Besides thinning ice, wildlife was another indicator of climate change. They expected to see herds of muskox and caribou, but it was a surprise to see grizzly bears roaming in polar bear country. They're seeing all these species up there that never used to be up there coming up from the south and now living in the Arctic. As you can see, there's a lot of uncertainty about the future of the Arctic. We hope that this video series will not only elucidate, but also elaborate on the many complexities of the region. The Arctic is the land and sea area north of the Arctic Circle. The latitude is about 66.34 degrees north. This is roughly the size of the North American continent and includes the northernmost third of Alaska, the Chukchi Sea, and U.S. territorial and exclusive economic zone waters north of Alaska. There are eight countries that have territory north of the Arctic Circle. Russia, Canada, the United States via Alaska, Norway, Denmark via Greenland, Finland, Sweden, and Iceland. Of these countries, only five are considered Arctic coastal states. The United States, Russia, Canada, Norway, and Denmark. One scientific definition is based on factors like average temperature. The 10 degree isotherm definition of the Arctic refers to the region as the land and sea area in the northern hemisphere where the average temperature for the warmest month, July, is below 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Another commonly used definition is the northern tree line, the point beyond which trees are unable to survive. There's a geographic north pole and magnetic north pole. The geographic north pole is defined as the northern end of the Earth's axis, and this is considered to be the true northernmost point on the Earth. The magnetic north pole is recognized as north by magnetic compasses, and this continually moves across the Arctic. It is not always in the same place as the geographic north pole. The official Arctic Council definition is the terrestrial and marine areas north of the Arctic Circle and north of the 62 degrees north latitude in Asia and 60 degrees north latitude in North America, modified to include the marine areas north of the Aleutian Chain, Hudson Bay, and parts of the North Atlantic including the Labrador Sea. The Smithsonian Institution's Arctic Studies Center identifies the Arctic on the basis of the cultures and peoples as well as animals adapted to Arctic lands and resources. And according to the Inuit Circumpolar Council, the Arctic is first and foremost the ancestral homeland of Inuit and other northern peoples. The second video of the series will discuss the environment and climate change and will explain some important issues like albedo effect, sea ice and permafrost, black carbon, temperature increases, and Arctic amplification. The video will also discuss the wildlife of the region, which is very unique, as well as the impacts of climate change on economics, society, and politics. The third video of the Arctic 101 series will explore the economics of the region. We will be discussing the major industries such as energy, fishing, shipping, and tourism, and outline the major challenges they have to exploring and exploiting the region. The fourth video in the series will focus on the communities of the Arctic and the people living in one of the harshest environments in the world. We want to share their wishes and desires for the future of the Arctic, what issues matter most to Arctic communities, and discuss local involvement in the development of the region. 
The last video of the series will examine in-place structures for cooperation, such as the Arctic Council and other regional organizations and agreements, and we will attempt to identify other opportunities and institutional options for cooperation, such as Coast Guard, spill response, and scientific information sharing.